if we can increase endurance by 50% by increasing the fuel efficiency of the engine, you could actually double or triple the time that an aircraft has to do its mission when it's actually over the area where it's trying to get to. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 158. What might the next generation UAV engines look like? For that question, we turn to Alex Skolnick co-founder and CEO of Liquid Piston, a Connecticut-based company that is revolutionizing next-generation engine development. The company develops and licenses compact and efficient power solutions based on an optimized thermodynamic cycle and a new type of rotary engine. The patented high-efficiency cycle is the biggest leap forward for combustion engine technology over the last 85 years. It holds great promise as the preferred future propulsion solution for both military and heavy commercial drones. Alec has a PhD in computer science and artificial intelligence from MIT, and he has spent a decade plus reinventing the rotary engine that Felix Wankel created in 1960 and Mazda is bringing back to life in 2019. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Alec talks about liquid piston, its revolutionary engine, and the potential value and impact on the military and commercial UAV sectors. But before we hear from Alec, I want to thank those of you who have been supporting my funding campaign on Patreon. For as little as $1 per month, you can help defray the costs of production and keep the podcast going and growing. Go to patreon.com slash drone radio show to join the team. Now let's learn about the next generation engines that may be powering UAV systems with Alex Skolnick. Let's pick up the interview where I ask Alec to introduce himself. I'm Alec Skolnick, co-founder and CEO of Liquid Piston. And our company is developing a new kind of rotary diesel combustion engine. Uh, It's really much more compact and fuel efficient, uh, game-changing technology for propulsion for systems, including UAVs. Alec, can you give us some background on the company? How did it start and evolve? We actually officially incorporated it in 2004. The company's been around for some years Back then, I was a first-year PhD student at MIT, and you know it was more of a, just an idea at that time. My father is a physicist, and he's uh, the primary inventor of the technology, so I've been helping him over the years in trying to launch this new business. Really, what he's done is developed an, an optimized thermodynamic cycle. So we've kind of gone back to the physics of how an engine operates. And if you look at engines today in a car, for example, they only convert about 15 to 20 percent of the energy in fuel into useful mechanical work. So the physicist in him, it just kind of always bothered him. You know, why, why is it that 80 percent of the energy in fuel is wasted as heat out of the engine? So we really started looking at it from an efficiency perspective and from thermodynamics. We formed the company, and it wasn't until several years later, uh, around 2007, that we got a first uh, small army contract, $70,000 small business innovation research grant, and then some venture capital. So that's that's when things really kind of started. And then over the years, it's been a lot of learning and a lot of research on this new cycle. Again, the cycle is something that hasn't changed in 100 years. So it's, it's very fundamental stuff. The question is, if you have a new cycle, how do you implement it? So the engines that we've developed, we've actually looked at dozens of different possible embodiments of the cycle. And what we've built now is called the X engine. It's a little rotary engine. It's kind of like uh, the old Weinkel rotary, but everything's flipped inside out. So you can kind of think of it as the exact opposite of a Weinkel rotary engine. And with this new architecture, we can embody our our cycle. We also solve a bunch of the challenges that the old rotaries have had with uh, sealing and lubrication, emissions and durability, things like that. So it's just a better engine with a very high efficiency capability. What type of vehicles was it designed to power? So we've always been focusing on smaller engines, you know, below 100 horsepower. Ultimately, the engine can be scaled anywhere that engines are used today, you know, down to a horsepower and up to probably about 1,000 horsepower. But 
we wanted to avoid the automotive market for business reasons. It's just a very slow, very conservative market. So we were always looking at smaller uh, engine applications. And that's one of the reasons that we are you know, very interested in the UAV space. What do you see as the opportunities for your engine in the UAV industry? Energy and power are fundamentally limiting items for anything mobile, and especially something like a UAV, which uh, has to carry its own weight and the weight of its propulsion system. Many U- UAVs, you're trying to fly as long as possible. So it's, it's really a, an energy and, and power issue. If you look at the available solutions today, you know you have gasoline engines, which tend to be quite inefficient. They're noisy. They vibrate. You have diesel engines, which are not very popular on UAVs because diesel engines, while they're more efficient, they're extremely heavy. And then you have electric propulsion. And electric is, um, for smaller drones, it's, it's obviously the, the way to go. But in a larger size drone, the batteries are not very energy dense. So if you consider that 50 pounds of battery can be displaced by just one pound of fuel, right? That's the energy ratio of today's best battery technology versus fuel. So batteries have a very long way to go to really be competitive with fuel. Where is the demand for the engine in the near term? We're starting by working with the military because they have an immediate need for heavy-fueled propulsion systems for their UAVs. The military has a mandate to operate on JP-8 fuel, which is basically a kerosene, and typically a diesel engine would operate on that type of fuel. As I said, diesel engines are very big and heavy, so they don't really have good power solutions that can run JP-8, and also they're interested in efficiency. So we are working with DARPA. We're developing a 30-kilowatt rotary engine, which operates on heavy fuel. The intent there is the the engine should fit in a 10-inch box and weigh about 30 to 40 pounds. That's a game changer, right? That's that's 10 times smaller and lighter than what they have available today for that power range. Is the engine in production? That engine is in development. So we have prototypes, early prototypes that are firing and running in the lab. The objective there is really focusing on the efficiency and power of the engine. It's not yet a fully packaged engine. We have two engines under, under development. So the, the larger one is funded by DARPA. And we have a smaller engine. It's about three to five horsepower, 70 cc rotary X engine. And that engine has been demonstrated out of the lab now. So we we took it and put it on a basically a small vehicle, like a, a go-kart, uh, just to kind of show its, its capability and how you start it and how responsive it is, the low vibration aspects. You're welcome to come to our facility and drive the go-kart around our, our shop. <laughs> what applications are best suited for this type of engine? Yeah, so it's it's really where you need a larger payload or longer endurance. So if if you're okay with carrying, you know, one pound of equipment and for for 20 minutes, then we're not going to be the right product for that space. But if you look at something, for example, package delivery, Amazon demonstrated some capability to deliver packages within a a 10 mile radius uh, autonomously. And I think they could deliver five pound packages. So that's great that they could have that kind of capability, but deploying it, what if you want a 20 pound package or what if you want to be have a 20 mile or 40 mile radius those are areas where we can help you also look at kind of emerging mobility applications uber uh, is pushing for vertical transport of people and uh, that may eventually be autonomous and so it's basically very large drones that can move people and things Power and energy will be very much limiting factors in in those types of applications, and that's where we can help. What are some of the benefits that the engine can deliver to the military? There's really two things that happen here. So first of all, our engine is quite a bit smaller and lighter than a typical diesel combustion engine, so we can lighten the weight of a vehicle. What the military uses today, unfortunately, they're really stuck with gasoline or avgas platforms. Just as an example, you have the Army Shadow UAV, which uses a 40-horsepower rotary engine for power. That engine cannot run heavy fuel, and on gasoline, it's very inefficient, right? So it's limited in endurance, in in range, by the efficiency of the power plant. There's only a certain amount of fuel that you can carry, and those drones are, are popular for surveillance applications. To support 
one aircraft in surveillance, they typically will have a pod of four aircraft. So one will be going to the destination, one will be at the destination actually doing the surveillance, and one, one will be coming back. The problem is that it takes quite a bit of time for them to deploy the aircraft and, and get it to its destination. So if we can increase endurance by 50% by increasing the fuel efficiency of the engine, you could actually double or triple the time that an aircraft has to do its mission when it's actually over the area where it's trying to get to. So logistically, that could really improve over the current operation. And could that mean fewer drones in the air and a cost savings? Yeah, absolutely. If you could increase the range, then you can have fewer pieces of equipment in the field. Interestingly, when you, when you look at drones, you also have quite a bit of ground support as well. They have these mobile command centers and uh, generators powering things on the ground. We can help with uh, power generation on the ground as well. So th there's a lot we can do to reduce operating costs in, in this space. Now, do I understand it correctly that there are only two moving parts in the engine? There are two primary moving parts. Uh, it's a rotor and a shaft. So that's kind of similar to a Weinkel rotary engine, which also has just kind of two moving parts. The benefits there, there's no oscillating mass. You don't have pistons moving back and forth. Everything is, is a, it's a purely rotational movement. And our engine behaves like a three-cylinder, four-stroke engine. So even though it only has one rotor, every time the rotor comes around, it actually executes our cycle in three parts of the engine. So you kind of have a benefit of behaving like a three-cylinder four-stroke, but with very few parts. So it's lighter and more efficient than an engine of similar size. Exactly. That's exactly what we're going for. What are some of the other benefits? Much less vibration, lower noise. We can design the system with less EMI signature as well. So there, there's a lot that we can do to help improve ISR applications. When did you start making plans to enter the UAV sector? It's something that we've thought about for some time, but in the last year or so, we've really started to gain traction in the space. We participated in a competition from AUVSI. They probably had about 50 applicants from startup companies involved in the drone industry, and we won the grand prize in that field. We also were awarded a prize for innovation and entrepreneurship from Sikorsky. So what we're seeing now is just a lot of kind of interest in what we're doing. We're in discussions with a number of the military defense contractors around using our propulsion system for their drones. So things are just kind of catalyzing for us right now in this space. What sort of feedback are you getting on the engine? People really appreciate the potential for improving power and efficiency. You know, those are game-changing things in the field. What's really holding us from commercializing it today or tomorrow would be the development status of the engine. So our engine has not been flight qualified yet. We haven't put it in a flight simulator. We haven't actually flown the engine yet. Uh, we haven't demonstrated thousands of hours of operation on the engine yet. So there are certain pieces of uh, development that still have to happen to really support an engine going into a production platform. Do you have a schedule for that activity? We're looking to do a technology demonstration probably around the end of the year, and that would be just kind of a low-altitude flight test of the engine on, on a simple platform. And then we're continuing to work with the government and with partners on maturing the technology. So we expect to start really pushing it towards an application within about a year. Now, based on your experience... What might we see in UAV propulsion systems in the future? There's a lot of interest in electrification of vehicles. And again, you, you, you run into the stumbling block of the energy density of batteries there. So what we see is we think that our technology can be a key enabling technology for the electrification of vehicles. You take a 1,000-pound battery and remove that, leave 100 pounds of battery, and use our power generation system in place of the rest of that battery. So we can functionally replace a thousand pounds of battery with a 100 or 200 pound package. And that gives the operator the ability to refuel, you know, wherever they need to. So instead of charging your batteries for six hours, you would just refuel it with regular fuel. There's a lot of talk about vertical takeoff. What are some of the considerations that make that successful? Yeah, so ver vertical takeoff is another area where there's a lot of interest. And I, I think it's also because of the electrification aspect. The problem is that engines are quite inefficient when you run them at part load. And a vertical takeoff vehicle uses a lot more power in takeoff as compared to uh, when it's cruising, when it's, when it's actually flying. 
And so if you run an engine like that, you're going to have to size the engine for takeoff, but then you're running it most of the time at a very low percentage of its uh, power output. So you're, you're going to be running the engine extremely inefficiently. And, and I think that's, that's a big reason why we haven't seen uh, vertical takeoff previously. If we are able to hybridize, so you can kind of take advantage of a electrical propulsion system that can give you a lot of power on the ground, and also the energy density of fuel, I think that's kind of a marriage of, of two really great technologies there. How do you describe liquid piston? I mean, you're not a drone company. How would you characterize it? We're a startup company. We are developing a technology. And our model is kind of like what Dolby Labs has done for signal processing and, and audio technology. That's kind of our, our type of model. So we develop custom power solutions for various customers and then license the technology to them. Uh, so we are actually kind of agnostic to the actual application. But as a startup, we're very sensitive to finding applications that have a kind of immediate need and, and, a, and a painful need for what we're doing to improve on propulsion and, and you know, power and energy. So for us, what we've observed is that military applications and aerospace and drone, you know, UAV, these areas are very sensitive to power to weight and also to efficiency. So these are kind of natural applications for us. According to the timeline on the company's website, there have been several milestones in the development of the engine. When did you start to believe that you were on the right track? The bulk of that time was really investigating the thermodynamic cycle. So if you look back at us uh, several years ago, we didn't even have an engine that looks like anything like the engine that we have today. So it started with uh, just purely modeling studies of the cycle. We got our first funding around 2007. And uh, after that, we built a few engines. Every engine that we built, we knew that you know we were on to something and that there was something important that we're working on here. Each engine architecture that we developed got simpler and simpler compared to the prior generation. The X engine, which is our latest and final engine architecture, it has, as you said, it has just two moving parts, the rotor and the shaft. It has a total of five gas seals. If you compare that to a, a three-cylinder four-stroke engine, which might have hundreds of parts and a great deal of seals, we are quite a bit simpler than even a piston engine would be. So I think simplicity speaks for the elegance of the design. And you know, our approach to, instead of just making a better engine, we're actually going after the physics of the engine. So that's something that's fundamental and hasn't changed in you know, well over 100 years. So it has been a journey to do this, but we're very confident that we're on the right track. Without getting too technical, what is the thermodynamic cycle? So most engines that people are familiar with operate on the auto cycle, which is like a gasoline engine or a diesel cycle. What we're doing is sort of mixing the two together. So if you look at a diesel engine, uh, which is generally more efficient than a gasoline engine, the reason it's more efficient is because a diesel engine compresses air without any fuel to a high compression ratio. That high compression ratio gives the engine its efficiency. The problem with a diesel, after you compress the air, you inject fuel, and it takes a good bit of time to inject, mix, and burn that fuel. While you're doing all that, your piston continues moving. So you're actually expanding the gases. You're lowering the pressure in the chamber while you're burning the fuel. And that's really fighting the efficiency of the engine. So what we do is we keep the volume constant for a longer period of time, giving the engine more time to mix and burn the fuel all the way to completion. And then we also have an overexpansion process. So most engines will compress and expand, and they kind of start and stop in the same point. If you've ever heard a car that has a leak in the muffler, it's extremely noisy, right? You're hearing the energy that's left over in the exhaust. What we do is we take that energy and we continue expanding and extracting that energy. So that energy comes back onto the shaft of the engine. So those are the features of the cycle. It's a high compression ratio, constant volume combustion, and overexpansion. When you put all that together, it gives you a thermodynamic efficiency of about 75%, which is quite a bit more efficient than a traditional auto or diesel cycle. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? There's many pieces of advice that I could give. I can say this. Every time that we get into a hard problem, people tell us that it's impossible. And I think that's the reason why nobody has done it before is because people think that something is impossible. 
And the only way to solve those problems and, and challenges is to just, just keep going and, and kind of power through it. And I think that's what sets apart the successful game-changing innovators from other folks. So I would just say just keep at it and solve tough challenges. And my final question, Alec, what do you hope will be Liquids Pistons' contribution to the drone industry? We think that we have a solution that provides the power and energy requirements for tomorrow's applications. This is really not about today's applications. This is really about enabling you know, new platforms that just are not possible with today's technology. I think that's where we are very excited about it and demonstrating kind of new things that, that you really could not do with today's battery or, or engine systems. In, in spaces where we need more power and, and more energy, you know, greater endurance, we're very excited to be a part of this, this space. That's it for episode 158 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Alex Golnick of Liquid Piston and learning about the company's revolutionary engine. I want to thank Alec for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Liquid Piston or want to connect with Alec, check out the webpage at liquidpiston.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for as little as $1 per month, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me. And I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.